helicopter lessons in 10 minutes or less. I'm Jacob, and in this video, I'll be going over loss of tail rotor effectiveness, also referred to as LTE for short. Now, some beginner pilots may have heard stories of other pilots getting into LTE, uh, potentially having an uncontrolled spin around the mask, which resulted in losing control of the helicopter or being forced to fly out of it or conduct a go around. Now, it can be quite a pucker factor if you don't know what's coming and you don't know what it is, so it's important to understand what exactly is happening with the helicopter and where this is coming from so that you can prevent getting into situations like these in the first place. Now my goal in this video is to do just that, so let's get started. Now loss of tail rotor effectiveness is an uncommanded rapid yaw rate that does not subside on its own, its own accord and which, if not corrected, can result in loss of helicopter control. The yaw rate tends to generally be to the right in a counterclockwise rotor system and to the left in a clockwise rotor system. For all of our lessons, we've been doing counterclockwise uh, rotor systems, so generally to the right in most uh, American-made helicopters. Now, this is not related to a break in the drop system, and it's not a stall condition in the tail rotor. Some commonly say it's a tail rotor stall condition, but this is just a misconception. The tail rotor thrust is merely insufficient, but not stalling. Loss of tail rotor effectiveness is a wind issue, which can occur when operating at speeds of less than effective translational lift. Now, flight and wind tunnel testing has identified a few relative wind regions that can cause loss of tail rotor effectiveness. And the first is generally from the four o'clock to the eight o'clock position and is known as weathercock stability. So weathercock, weathercock stability, just like I said, from the four o'clock to the eight o'clock positions. So this is generally the wind that's impacting the helicopter from the aft position. So what exactly is going on here? Well, wind is impacting the fuselage from this region and the helicopter tends to pivot around the mast towards the wind or weather vane into the wind. So if it's impacting from the right, the nose wants to go to the right. If it's impacting from the left, the nose wants to go to the left. Now, unless a resisting pedal input is made, an uncommanded turn to the right or left will develop. And attempting to hover at a stationary uh, hover in this position can result in excessively high pilot workload where you're really having to pay a lot of attention to your pedals to maintain your, your heading. Now there's another region for LTE uh, where winds impact the tail rotor between the 8 o'clock uh, to the 11 o'clock positions. This creates a tail rotor vortex ring state. So if you remember from the previous videos, vortex ring state uh, is generally synonymous or can be also associated with a settling with power condition. Uh, so what's going on here is your tail rotor located here and you have winds say coming from the 11 o'clock to the 8 o'clock position. So generally impacting the tail rotor as such. Um, now what's going on here is your tail rotor uh, is essentially settling with power. The tail rotor is meant to be there to counteract counteract the torque effect of the main rotor by pushing the tail rotor clockwise or to the right. But when enough of a left crosswind component occurs, this creates a vortex ring state laterally in the tail rotor, which reduces the effectiveness of the tail rotor's ability to counteract the torque effect. So simply put, just like what we had for the main rotor diagram, if this is your tail rotor mounted off the side of your tail boom, what's going on right here is you're having this upwards flow of air or lateral flow of air when you apply it to the tail rotor, it's causing these vortices to form, which makes it very, very hard for your tail rotor to do its job to counteract the main, uh, main rotor torque effect. So what you're gonna have is a lot of squirrely, uh, squirreliness in your, uh, your pedals and excursions off to the right with the nose that are just uncommanded. All right, now the next region uh, occurs with wind velocities from the nine o'clock to the 11 o'clock um, as a result of your or in, is a loss of tail rotor effectiveness, but it's a result of your main rotor disc vor uh, vortex interfering with your tail rotor. So it's commonly referred to as main rotor disc vortex or disc interference, depending on the reference. So what's going on here is this is when you have winds impacting from the nine o'clock to the 11 o'clock positions right here and it's pushing the main rotor disc vortices into the tail rotor. So remember our wingtip vortices, it comes off the tips of the wings. Well, this, the wind is pushing this away from the helicopter from the nine o'clock, so pushing it to the, uh, the lower right portion of the disc. But what happens is on this side of the disc, these vortices are being blown right into the tail rotor. 
Um, so the tail rotor is operating in turbulent air. This causes angle of attack fluctuations and an eventual sudden rapid right yaw. Now, I've seen this personally on countless occasions with newer pilots making an approach to an OG hover with a left quartering headwind uh, where the right yaw just hit instantly after decel decelerating less than effective translational lift. So another region to watch out for. Now the last region generally doesn't get that much coverage, but it's still very much a part of loss of tail rotor effectiveness. And this occur occurs between the two o'clock to the four o'clock positions when a right crosswind impacts the tail rotor and causes an angle of attack reduction. So as the wind impacts the tail rotor from the two o'clock to a four o'clock, just like the name implies, there's an angle of attack reduction. The crosswind increases induced flow of the tail rotor, which results in a decrease in the thrust. Now you can get into the, this condition if you're just hovering with winds impacting from the two o'clock to the four o'clock position. But where it usually uh, sneaks up on guys is you're done with your flying for the day, you're hover taxiing back to parking, you might be hover taxiing into a tailwind, and all of a sudden you start to do a right turn to hook it into parking, well, you start the right turn, you develop a little bit of a right yaw, and all of a sudden now the tail rotor is operating in an angle of attack reduction area as you complete the turn. And so what happens? The nose just continues to go, to go around to the right despite you stomping on the left pedal to try to stop it. So uh, another region here of loss of tail rotor effectiveness to look out for. Um, now attention must be paid to these regions because they can build on each other, they can amplify each other. So you could be hovering and say a main rudder disc vortex region, or just get into this region, it starts to do a right turn. Um, and as the, the yaw rate starts to build, now you find yourself in a tail rudder vortex ring state, um, which continues to, to aggravate that right hand turn. And you may eventually find yourself in say a weathercock stability. Uh, the big thing here is you have to be able to recognize this loss of tail rudder effectiveness quickly so that you can recover it before you lose aircraft control. So if LTE is experienced, the best recovery technique is to apply some forward cyclic and pedal inputs as much as possible to maintain the heading control as you fly out of it. Now, if the altitude permits, say if you're at a high OG hover, a collective reduction can help aid in reducing this yaw rate and give you a little bit more of an opportunity to uh, maintain control as you fly out of it. Well, that wraps up loss of tail rotor effectiveness. It's an uncommanded yaw rate that does not subside on its own accord. It's not a result of tail rotor stall. It's not a break in the drive comp, uh, components or any, anything in the drive shafts. And it's uh, regarded as a wind issue. It's usually a result of operating less than effective translational lift with wind coming from certain regions around the, the rotor disc or the tail rotor. Uh, it results in excessively high pilot workload if you're trying to maintain heading control and any, any of these conditions, uh, potentially running out of, uh, say, left pedal in some of these conditions, uh, as well as in some of the, the worser cases, potential loss of aircraft control if you find this yourself in this situation with an excessive right yaw rate and you're not able to arrest it soon enough. But that's loss of tail rotor effectiveness. Thanks for watching and be sure to hit like and subscribe below. I'm Jacob and this has been Helicopter Lessons in 10 minutes or less. Safe flying.